Hey everybody, I'm Dan Schmidt. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Deer Talk Now. As I said in the past, we're going to try to take questions however you send them to us. Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Google+, the Deer and Deer Hunting webpage. You send us your question, we'll try to answer it, and if we answer it, we're going to send you a special prize. Today's question comes from Tyler Olson from Facebook, and Tyler writes, I've been getting a lot of trail camera photos this summer of young bucks. If I pass these deer up this fall, does this mean I'll stockpile a bunch of bucks for the coming years so I can hunt them? Well, Tyler, it's a little bit more complicated than just passing them up. It's a thing called deer dispersal. And today's episode is going to be part one of two on how deer disperse, both bucks and does. Let's go into the deer and deer hunting research archives and learn more about how bucks disperse. Also, be sure to stick around at the end of the program. We're going to show you a bonus hunting footage video, which you're really going to enjoy. And also, we're going to show you a great new call in Shop Deer that's going to let you call in more deer this fall. Let's check it out. Did you know that deer disperse when they move away from their birth range and establish a new adult home range? It's true. Although there are some exceptions, most white-tailed does move relatively short distances from where they were born to where they will live as adults. As a result, they tend to retain overlapping home ranges with other related females. Most bucks, on the other hand, establish adult home ranges that are separate from their birth range, sometimes traveling long distances to do so. So why do young bucks disperse? When do they disperse and how far will they travel? Answer to these and similar questions depend upon many poorly understood factors. Let's take a look at some of them. Many scientific studies have shown that most 50% to 80% young bucks are inclined to disperse to establish new home ranges by the time they are one and a half years old, regardless of the deer population density or the amount of forest cover. Early studies suggested that breeding competition and aggression by older, more dominant bucks was the primary factor responsible for young buck dispersal. However, more recent information indicates this is not the case. Even in the absence of mature bucks, yearling bucks will disperse to new home range. To the contrary, domination by adult does appears to provide one of the chief stimuli for young buck dispersal. In fact, one study has shown that non-migratory orphan bucks are more likely to remain on their birth range, whereas others tend to disperse in the presence of their mothers. However, other studies have shown contrasting results and the influence of orphan yearling bucks has not been investigated. Whatever the case, one must conclude that most young bucks will leave their birth range and establish a new adult home range which serves good protection against inbreeding in the whitetail herd. So when do young bucks disperse? In heavily forested cover, most bucks disperse just before the rut, when they are 16 to 17 months old. However, studies conducted on intensively farmed land with minimal forest cover show that 50% to 75% of these bucks left their birth range during spring, when they were 10 or 12 months old, about the same time that their mothers gave birth to new fawns. In either case, spring dispersal or autumn dispersal, young bucks are likely to experience considerable aggression from their mothers. It's also important to note that some bucks continue to revisit their birth range and delay establishing new permanent adult home ranges until they are two or two and a half years old. At least this has been the case on heavily forested northern land where deer typically migrate seasonally and bucks rarely disperse more than six miles. So, dispersal timing and distance tends to be influenced by the amount of forest cover available. Scant forest cover generally leads to earlier spring dispersal and longer dispersal distances. So how far will a buck go? The summary provided by some researchers shows a highly variable nature of dispersal distances for young bucks. Average dispersal distances can range anywhere from 2 miles to 24 miles depending upon the amount of available forest cover. Typically, scant forest cover contributes to greater dispersal distances. In extreme cases, some bucks have been found to have dispersed more than 100 miles from where they were born. 
Why do young bucks settle where they settle? Researchers have a fairly good handle on determining why young bucks are so inclined to leave their birth range. They can even predict how far they are likely to travel with reasonable accuracy. However, it's still unknown what causes the dispersing buck to settle in a specific area. If this buck is looking for a certain habitat feature, or is he looking for vacant space, is he looking for breeding opportunities, or is he looking for a compatible association with other deer? Researchers generally agree migrating bucks exhibit somewhat different dispersal patterns than non-migrating bucks. That is, a migrating buck often disperses in the direction of land that he's familiar with during winter. This seems logical given their prior experience traveling these winter routes. In the final analysis, it's important to note that whitetails are social animals. They're going to set up home where they feel comfortable and where they have compatible associations with other deer. It seems as though young bucks might at times have considerable more difficulty in finding that social niche. So why does a young buck settle where he settles? It could depend upon the season, whether he disperses in spring or autumn. It could depend on the deer density, or it could depend on the herd, sex, and age composition, as well as characteristics of that new area. For more insights on deer research and deer behavior, be sure to visit our website, deerandeerhunting.com, and subscribe to Deer and Deer Hunting Magazine. and we could hear deer walking, but we couldn't figure out where it was. All of a sudden, Paul goes, there he is on your left, big buck. And he was circling around trying to find Cross Hill where, where it was coming from. Whew. That's a nice buck. Oh. Look at that buck. Look at that buck. Man, would you take a look at that buck? Oh, he's a frame eight. He's got an extra kicker here, which makes him a, a full nine. And he almost has a matching point right here to, ma to match it up. A little extra kicker on the front. Nice long brow tines. That is a great Kentucky buck.